Welcome back to Tutorials EU. I'm Dennis Panuta and today we're diving deep into the world of web scraping. We'll explore how to automate data extraction, starting from the basics and learning about what is possible and what is not. After, we will talk about a tool we like to use called Scraping Bee, which helps us greatly in getting data from web pages easier and more reliably. So let's not wait any longer and get started with today's video. So first of all, what even is web scraping? Well, web scraping is the process of extracting vast amounts of data from websites. Data scraping has numerous applications across many industries, including insurance, banking, finance, trading, e-commerce, sports, and digital marketing. Data is also used to inform decision-making, generate leads and sales, manage risk, guide strategies, and create new products and services. For example, it's a cornerstone in the world of data science, enabling us to gather and analyze data at a scale that would be impossible manually. However, web scraping can be a complex and time-consuming process, especially when dealing with large websites or intricate data structures. Now, that does not mean that it's impossible for someone like you and I to do this. So let us take a look at how we would do such a thing in a small application here. We'll scrape data from a website using C Sharp, leveraging the HTML Agility Pack library, a fairly popular choice for web scraping in C Sharp. So here we are in our project. Currently, we only have everything ready to build our web scraper, including installing the HTML Agility Pack library, which you can get, by the way, under Project, Manage, NuGet Packages, and searching the library name here. This one right here is what you want. So where do we start? As this needs to run through a web page to get us the data, we will want to run this asynchronously. So let's just do that first. By the way, if you need help with async programming in C Sharp, we have a great video about that on our channel. Check it out to learn everything you need about this. All right, next up, we should get a URL. To be specific, the URL we want to scrape from. In this case, we want to get some data from the Wikipedia page on OpenAI, as it's all the rage lately. Next, we'll need a new HTTP client object. We will be using this class to send HTTP requests and receive HTTP responses from a resource identified by the URL. Then we send an asynchronous HTTP GET request to the URL stored in the URL variable and assign the response contents to a variable called HTML. The await keyword is used to wait for the task to complete. Now we declare a variable named HTML document and create a new instance of the HTML document class. And we finish by loading the HTML content stored in the HTML variable into the HTML document object for parsing. That's a lot of HTML <laughs> in a few sentences. Anyways, great. I hope all of this makes sense. And we essentially just set this up to try and read from an URL and store whatever it responds to us in a variable. Now we need to check for the content we want because what we have right now is, let's say, pretty unreadable, pretty much just got the entire source code for the URL, essentially this right here. So how do we do this? Well, with some queries. The chain of command queries the HTML document to find all the div elements with a class attribute containing the value MW parser output. The results are stored then in a list and the list is assigned to the variable divs. Why did we get the MW parser output attribute? Well, simply because it's a class that Wikipedia uses for the main content of its articles. If we go to our specified URL, we can use just that when inspecting the web page. Let's take a look at what this contains. For that, let's simply for each loop through the divs variable and write its content to the console. Now, when we run this, we get this. Well, this is quite some text, but still, we got it to work. It scraped the URL and got us everything that we asked for. So how could we get something more specific now? Let's instead try to get the first paragraph of the page, so this one right here. 
To get that, we start by selecting the P elements in the current div element and filter out any P elements that only contain white space. We do this because Wikipedia uses multiple P tags for formatting and some of them are empty. Once we do that, we convert the filtered elements to a list. Great. Then we need to check if the list of P elements contains at least one element, just in case. Then we print the text content of the first P element in the list to the console. The trim method here removes any leading or trailing white space, so the result is a bit cleaner. And finally, we break out of the loop, since we already have gotten our first paragraph. Let's run this and there we go. We have our first paragraph in our console. Great. So in a nutshell, this would be what web scraping refers to, which although in this case it only scraped a paragraph out of a public web page, nothing stops us from using this for bigger scale projects like large scale data analysis or comprehensive marketing analysis. Well, wait, there actually is something stopping us from doing that. For once, not every website likes being scraped. Many web pages do not allow scraping even, meaning that any attempt like this will be directly blocked. Many times, because scraping can be quite tasking on the server the web page is hosted on and sometimes even some false triggers thinking that our scraping attempt is a direct attack get alerted. Mind you, that is not the case for our Wikipedia page here, but many other pages will outright not allow any kind of scraping done to them. Not only that, but another common challenge in web scraping is dealing with websites that use JavaScript to load or display content. Traditionally, HTTP requests cannot access this content, making it difficult to scrape these websites. But what if there was a tool that could help us with this process? Well, enter Scraping B, a web scraping API that handles headless browsers and rotates proxies for you. Scraping B is a powerful tool that can simplify your web scraping tasks allowing you to focus on extracting the data you need rather than dealing with the complexities of web scraping. Scraping B is perfect for general web scraping tasks like real estate scraping, price monitoring, extracting reviews without getting blocked. It also offers data extraction features, allowing you to get just the data you need with one simple API call. So then we say, Thank you Scraping B for sponsoring this video and get to try this tech out right away. Even though they're not really directly sponsoring us, but we are using their affiliate system. So please make sure to use the link in the description to help us out because without affiliate programs like these, we just wouldn't be able to make videos like that or like the one that you're watching right now. So it would really help us out if you do use our link in the description below. Thank you very much for that. So let's, for example, see how we could quickly start using Scraping Bee in our application right here. First, go get yourself registered at scrapingbee.com. You can simply use our link in the description below and you can get a free trial if you want to try this out with me here. Make sure to confirm your account and you should receive an email to the address you registered in like a few seconds after registering. Then just copy your API key and place it in your code. That would be, for example, in a new variable we could create called API key. Now we just need the API URL, which will contain Scraping Bee's URL together with our key and the URL we want to scrape. And now, if we run this, we see the same result as before. That's simple. All right, now the question is though, what makes this so special? Well, let's explore that. Remember how I told you that websites blocking you could become an issue? This is usually the case because websites think that you may try to overload them if you make too many requests. Well, Scraping Bee can help you with its large proxy pool, which allows you to bypass rate limiting while scraping web pages, reducing the chances of being blocked. This is incredibly useful when scraping websites that have anti-scraping measures in place. You can enable Scraping Bee's proxy rotation feature by adding the premium proxy equals true parameter to your API request. 
With this line of code, Scraping B will automatically rotate between premium proxies, ensuring that your scraping requests are less likely to be blocked by the target website. Well, that is great and all, but what about those JavaScript websites? If you try to scrape many websites, you will come across some that will give a bunch of JavaScript code instead of a web page. Many web pages must often render their code before they have anything to show you. With Scraping Bee's JavaScript rendering feature, you can scrape any web page, even those heavily reliant on JavaScript for loading or displaying content. This is a game changer, as many modern websites use JavaScript to load or display anything, and this content cannot be accessed with traditional HTTP requests. And to use it, it's again just by adding one line to your request. By adding render underscore JS equals true to the API request, Scraping B will render the JavaScript on the web page before returning the HTML. This allows you to scrape websites that heavily rely on JavaScript, something that would be very challenging to do manually. If we try to do this with, for example, this URL right here, we can see it successfully gives us the data we asked for. And just so you see the difference, if we remove this, this would be our result. There we go, not what we need for sure. Quite the features already, right? But then Scraping B isn't just about making the scraping process easier. It's about providing you with a comprehensive set of tools to manage your scraping tasks. What if you were to scrape data from a web page that returns an error? Say something went wrong on their site or you typed in something wrong in the URL even. Instead of your application breaking, Scraping B can return error codes. If Scraping B encounters an error code while processing your request, it will return a response with a status code of 400 or 500. This response will include a JSON body that contains an error field with a description of the error. Let us try to see that. For example, type some sort of a fake URL in, so a URL that leads to nowhere. This would usually just break the application. Then to be able to see the error, let's put this into a try catch and write out the error we have gotten. As we run this, and there we go, you see the application just runs and we get a nice error message to work off of. This for sure makes things easier if we try to get a good scraping tool going. From general web scraping and data extraction to even things like screenshots and no code scraping, it is truly a great tool to add to your personal tool set. Also, knowing about this tag brings you already a step forward towards being able to call yourself a data scientist, a job title that is highly acclaimed lately. So that's it, let's wrap up the video. Web scraping is really a powerful tool for ex data extraction and tools like Scraping Bee can make this process so much easier and more efficient. Whether you are a data scientist looking to gather large amounts of data for analysis, a developer looking to automate data extraction tasks, or a hobbyist working on a personal project. Web scraping is a skill that is for sure worth learning. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this content valuable, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future content and happy coding.